Okay, it looks like by my clock we're right at the top of the hour. Uh, again, my name is Anthony Butler. I'm the Individual Disability and Critical Illness Specialist here at Art Jetter & Company. Um, we're currently going through a webinar series concerning DI protection sales strategies. Um, part one of the series was how to present a no-loss insurance strategy, um, which we did last Tuesday, November 14th. Uh, today we're going to be talking about unique opportunities for small business owners. Uh, Brock Falconer, who is the Regional Disability Income Sales Manager, um, is our guest speaker today. So with that being said, Brock, I have you take it away. Thank you, Anthony. Really appreciate it and really appreciate your guys' attendance today. I um, know there's a lot of places you could be and a lot of things you could be doing, but appreciate you pulling out a few minutes. Uh, we'll get you in and out and hopefully get you some stuff that you can take to the streets today and or implement into your everyday duties in working with clients. Today is going to be a focus on small business owners, really the backbone of America, and, and again, folks that probably have needs that far exceed even the average W-2 employee uh, when just basing the idea upon not only them being self-employed and taking that uh, very high-risk plunge, but obviously having typically some employees that rely upon them and, again, play a pretty uh, important role in their overall local community as well. Um, so let's focus on some small business owners. Uh, pertaining to income protection and disability insurance opportunities. Ultimately, we first need to kind of get into the head of these business owners, right? We want to first find out really what motivated them um, to want to be a small, small, medium, or potentially even large business owner uh, eventually. Uh, we want to know what role the business plays in their lives currently, um, what it has in the past, and obviously what uh, role it would play in the future. You know, was this uh, a retirement plan? Uh, is this a, a succession plan uh, for uh, either relatives and or children? Um, is this meant to, you know, be an asset that they, you know, take further into life? Um, was this their ultimate dream or, again, was this more of an opportunist, opportunistic opportunity? Um, you know, again, you know, what role do they play and what role does their business play, uh, both with uh, employees, uh, family members, uh, as I kind of quickly mentioned, even the local community as well. Um, one thing that I think is really cool is the focus at this time of year in the holidays uh, for some of those small business Saturdays and things like that. So, you know, even, you know, on the marketing side overall in communities, there's definitely a focus on the important for how uh, great these small businesses can be for all around. Um, ultimately, you know, how would the business suffer if that business owner was uh, able to work? You know, this is a very tangible uh, and I think important question to ask them and one that they're not often going to think about. Um, we know they would have to be knocked down and drug out for them not to show up at work. But again, let's get them hypothetically thinking about what would actually happen if they didn't have a choice and they did not have the ability to work. Um, then we get into maybe some further fact-finding or at least a general idea on what the fixed expenses are to keep the business open, keep the business flourishing, keep the lights on, keep everything churning and burning. Uh, again, do they have a succession plan in place? If that's part of why they open the business and that's kind of the motivation, you know, what is that actual plan? You know, a lot of times what we'll find is that was kind of uh, the emotional and or uh, de um, predetermined reason to start this business, but maybe they haven't actually followed through, in which case just bringing that idea to play uh, could be very valuable in working with that business owner. And also, is there a salary continuation plan in place? I won't go too far into this, but just note, depending on the structure of the business, and I'm talking S-Corp, C-Corp, LLC, so on and so forth, if an owner is not able to work and there is no legal document salary continuation plan in place, uh, oftentimes that owner is not able legally to even pay themselves. Uh, one thing to really point out, uh, I think, in working with business owners, and again, if you wanted more information on salary continuation plans, plenty of information um, online, as well as I would be more than happy to, and, and Anthony as well would be more than happy to uh, kind of do some research on that and make sure that, again, business owners are protected, even for things they haven't really even thought through. When we talk about eligible expenses for a business expense plan, again, this is a disability insurance plan that separately is set up from any kind of income protection. The idea being for business owners, they can purchase this plan. It sets up a pool of money 
in which they can reimburse themselves for fixed eligible overhead expenses when they become disabled. We know separately that we talked about last week as well as we'll continue to talk about the need for income protection, paycheck insurance. Your personal liabilities are only paid for by the amount of money you're able to bring in. That's still available and important for business owners, but separately we need to cover their fixed overhead expenses of the business to keep that business again burning, churning, uh, healthy, and essentially uh, valuable either to keep in-house or to potentially keep value in uh, so they can maybe find another suitor for it if they again become more permanently disabled. Let's focus on again what eligible expenses actually exist with most companies when talking about a business expense policy because the key to that type of contract in the disability realm is these need to be fixed expenses. Lease or rent payments, while there is a term potentially to that, you know, even if that lease goes up or that or that, you know, um, you know, place of place of rental is, you know, gonna need to be renewed, we know that they're not gonna turn around and essentially own it. We know this is even though it's a fixed term of a lease, they're essentially gonna have to re up either at that location or maybe a new one. So that's considered permanent. Utilities is a no brainer, we need to keep the lights on. Uh, depreciation is pretty consistent for most businesses office maintenance and repairs, billing collection fees, uh, so on and so forth. One important one to point out are employee salaries. Um, while these are permanent and continuous and fixed expenses, we need to make sure we exclude uh, when setting up the dollar amount that we can put into this pool of money, uh, we need to separately pull out a, a family member um, that works at the company, um, the insured income is not covered, and essentially anyone at the company that's considered a quote unquote income generating. For instance, you have a company, you have a sales force of three or four individuals. If you go down as the business owner, your sales force should still be able to go out there and at least sell enough widgets or whatever they're selling to pay at least their own income. Otherwise, they were probably a bad sales hire from the start, anyways, right? So that's not someone's salary that would be covered, but admin assistant, bookkeeper, those general employees. Um, kind of the brick and mortar are definitely individuals that again with this policy you can reimburse yourself for having to pay their incomes uh, even though you as the owner are not able to work. Again very important policy for business owners. Again just to simplify we have a gross income as a business owner we can cover for income protection or paycheck insurance their taxable slash reportable income. So that's their income after expenses and write-offs are already taken out. That's your income protection. Business expense is a one-two punch to coincide with income protection to make sure that the eligible expenses, again, that came out of the gross income pre-tax uh, can, again, be separately covered uh, by that reimbursement policy of business expense. Great way to really do a fact-finding uh, when working with clients and business owners. Uh, we have a mug sheet that many of you have maybe seen, and if not, we can get it to you. That's really a line for mortgage, utility, groceries. A client for income protection puts those numbers in there, comes up with a total base minimum that they would need to be covered for for income protection. This is no different except for the fact that it's, again, dealing with the fixed overhead expenses. These aren't necessarily all the expenses that are eligible but these are expenses that would typically be involved uh, with every small, medium, or large business owner. And again, a great way to do a fact-finding idea on what that uh, business expense amount needs to be. Um, this just makes it more tangible, gives them a feel for, again, what they're specifically trying to cover, uh, and really make sure it's taken care of. Uh, in working in insurance, what we always try to do is produce as many acronyms as humanly possible, and here's another one. Um, but ultimately, you know, here's kind of an idea to just keep in your head. So we have a, a, a perk idea for business owners. So we know they need personal paycheck coverage. We know they need the elective benefit periods that are available to make sure you're structuring your policy to make it cost effective, both for income protection as well as potentially your business expense policy. Um, we know that we need to have a policy that covers reimbursement of business expenses. Uh, and then lastly, we know that there's discounts available if a business owner were to purchase income protection and business expense together. It's a 5% discount on each policy, 
uh, why this is important is because if they in any way, shape, or form can see that their income and their ability to pay for their personal expenses is an important to need, as well as the ability to keep the lights on in their business is an important need, there's absolutely no reason why they should not be purchasing in some way, shape, or form a policy in each category. Income protection for personal expenses, business expense to make sure that they have reimbursable ability to pay back themselves for the expenses they pay when they're not able to work. Again, 5% discount on each. Also note, we do have a few different rewards available for business owners as well. Um, not only do we have a 5% multi-life discount, if we can have three or more people at the same company covered, we have the multiple policy discount, uh, again, which I listed if you purchase business expense along with income protection, there's a 5% discount on each. Unfortunately, we're not able to combine discounts, though. We cannot layer them. So if you qualify in any way, shape, or form for a 5% discount, you're not able to bump that higher. However, another discount, which is actually wrapped into the overall price of the policy, is the ability to work with business owners to get them an occupation class upgrade. This is completely arbitrary terms and ideas, and it's a little bit different carrier to carrier, but just note that there's a number given to everyone um, that purchases a policy that's based on what's considered the risk class of their occupation. Uh, we at Illinois Mutual have risks between one and five, one being the most hazardous type occupations, roofers, uh, that kind of occupation that, again, more prone to injury, accident, that sort of thing. Uh, and that's going to be the most expensive rate, all the way to class five, which are people pushing pencils uh, in an office environment, which is the best rate. Keep in mind, again, as a business owner, we can upgrade you from one class to one higher class, which is going to really bring down your price uh, without the need for an actual discount to be applied. Uh, and it's going to be a very aggressive price difference. Um, the qualification at least two years of being self-employed and showing after expenses and write-offs, again, that taxable, reportable income of at least $30,000 over the past two years. That's available to all business owners outside of people in a specific medical profession. Another advantage for business owners is what they call a business owner allowance. What this ultimately means is we're conceding that a lot of business owners are going to utilize as much tax shelter as possible. Not to cheat in any way, shape, or form uh, the necessity to pay taxes, but just because it's very expensive as a business owner, uh, again, to have to pay these taxes. And the, and the small business to medium and large business owner taxes are astronomical. I think we can all concede that. So ultimately, that means that a lot of business owners do not end up showing a lot of income. Even though they have very profitable and successful businesses, it does not behoove them to you know, have a huge, large uh, taxable, reportable income. It just means they're going to have to pay more taxes. We as a company understand that. Um, based on certain businesses and certain criteria, again, usually it's length of business ownership uh, and ultimately the success of the business, we can actually use a business owner allowance that adds in 20% extra income, which ultimately means that they can get a larger benefit than what truly their taxable and reportable income allows for. Again, just an ability to throw a bone for business owners and say, hey, we know that you ultimately are more successful uh, than what your taxable reportable income showing. Uh, here's an ability to get a higher benefit because we're conceding that. Uh, let's keep in mind that a few conceptual rewards for this kind of purchase uh, is ultimately business protection. You want to keep the value uh, of your business high, especially the perceived value, um, because again, if you're suffering a disabling event and you're going to be out a, a long time, five, six, seven years, chances are you're not going to want to keep that business in-house. You're going to start a succession plan early. Uh, you're going to look to maybe a competitor that's been looking to do a buyout and actually and uh, go through with that. But again, that's going to be a lot harder to do and keep value in the business if, again, you're struggling to pay the bills uh, and the revenue's hurting because of the fact you're having to pull revenue just to pay for those bills. Um, there's going to be a lot more conceptual, internal, and external motivation um, to want to help keep that business alive as well. If you go to your employees and, and state the fact that you're going to need to have overtime work or you're going to need help um, with different facets of the business that maybe these individuals hadn't done before because of the fact that you were the one that took care of it, if you show them the fact that you actually took advantage and responsibility 
for your personal income protection as well as the business expense plan and therefore are doing everything in your power to keep the business strong, to have it be there and strong for the employee or maybe even other individuals in the community. If you can express to them that you took advantage and responsibility of opportunities available to you when you were healthy, to make sure that you were taken care of and the business was going to be strong if you became unhealthy, there's going to ultimately be conceptually a lot more people prone to help and put in some sacrifice to help keep you going. Here's a quick idea of why uh, return a premium is a fantastic opportunity for business owners as well. If we look at the cost of uh, a policy here real quick, uh, this is the normal kind of setup for a business expense plan, 5000 a month, 30-day elimination period, two-year benefit period, very, very standardized policy. Uh, this includes a discount because this is ultimately set up to be purchased along with an income protection plan. Uh, but then we look at the return of premium rider. We would add uh, $21 and change onto this policy, ultimately to do a fantastic service for us because we're looking at the ability to have conceptually a 6.81% return of investment on our added cost of that return of premium rider. If we put in $242 in this instance of extra premium uh, over the life of the contract, when we hit age 67 as a business owner, we're going to get back one, over $29,000, which is all uh, the premiums put into the policy back. Uh, keep in mind that this is business expense. This is a policy that Oftentimes, business owners will take a write-off on, which ultimately means they're going to pay pre-tax. Uh, what that ultimately means then is they are taking a write-off on the premiums. Therefore, when their return of premium check comes, in this case, over $29,000, that is going to be a taxable event. For income protection, 99.9% .9 of the time the policy is paid for with post-tax dollars. Therefore, there's no write-off on the premiums. Therefore, the return of premium check will come tax-free. In this instance, it's typically a little bit different. The business owners do have the ability to write this type of policy off. However, that taxable $29,000 and change is not going to be uh, a disheartening benefit at all because of the fact that the entire time that they own the policy as a business owner, not only did they write off the premium, but they also wrote off these overhead expenses as well. So that ultimately means that even the return of premium check, it's taxable, we'll concede that. Uh, it's really a wash because of the fact uh, that they've been able to write off the premiums as well as those expenses the entire time. But just note again, if we invested that same amount of money on just specifically the rider, and then we got 29000 and change back after 33 years in this instance, you would need a guaranteed rate of return of 6.81% if you actually put that money into the market. Very tough to guarantee that rate. Again, this is a conceptual rate of return, uh, but again, fantastic ability for the business owners to not only do what's right for their business, their employees, as well as potentially their community, um, but also be able to do so with, again, that no loss mentality. Need the policy, you're going to have it. Don't need it, you're going to get all your money back. Again, where is the loss? We have the ability to work with specific occupations to help you guys with some marketing campaigns. Uh, Anthony will do a great job at trying to find some of these opportunities and working with you. Just note again that you know there's a lot of opportunities uh, in just your local sectors to pursue some of this stuff. You know. All these hairstylists and barber shops within five or ten miles um, you know, of your business and or residence are going to have an owner, potentially even an owner of multiple shops. You know, same with these mechanic shops. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity to really work with self-employed individuals. Keep in mind, even in the dental field, a lot of hygienists nowadays, well over 50%, are all 1099. That ultimately means that they're self-employed. Same goes for nurses. Farmers is an absolute no-brainer as well. Truck drivers are typically 1099. Um, I think you can kind of see where this goes, but just note we have marketing pieces that specifically cater to these type of occupations, and you can really utilize them to really get um, a very quick and easy marketing campaign going just uh, in your local community, which these are the type of business owners we want to work with anyways, right? 
ultimately, I wanted to thank you guys for your time today. Uh, again, cannot stress enough the importance of not only income protection, but in working with small business owners and making sure they have that one-two punch. Income protection and business expense. Also, think about the differentiator, the ability to have a return of premium rider so that the policy is there for you if you need it. If you don't need it, you're going to get all of your money back. Taking responsibility, making sure all those that depend on you and your business in this instance are taken care of, proving to them that you're doing everything you can in your power to be able to do so, and again, the ability to get all of your money back should you be the three out of four people, if you look at the odds, uh, that typically would not trigger one of these policies. I want to thank you guys for your time today, uh, and here's some contact info for Anthony and his team. All right, again, thank you everybody for joining on what's probably a short week for most of us. Um, if you have any additional questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to give me a call. Uh, the number listed there, 800-228-0008. My extension is 1032. Uh, you guys have a happy Thanksgiving, and uh, we'll see you next week, next Tuesday. Thanks a lot.